Uh, I am Wendy Upward, uh, co chair of this roundtable. Um, I'm super excited to have so many of you here in person and uh, really grateful to those of you who are joining online. Um, just to give you a like, 30 second background of who I am, for those of you who I met, um, I am a director of some of the multiple project, which is a center at the Brookings Institution, and I'm a senior fellow in economic studies there. Uh, and before going to Brookings, I was chief economist at the Congressional Uh Let me, I'm going to take over to Bob, who is my co chair, who is joining us online. Uh, he'll introduce himself and then, and then we'll uh, move along with exciting things. Thank you, Wendy. Um, I would say for uh, we're getting a bit of a, a feedback like, on the uh, line, so hopefully the the staff can uh, uh, sort that out quickly. Um, so uh, my name is Bob Kopp. Um, I am a professor of Rutgers at Rutgers University. I'm a, I'm a climate scientist, uh, so I bring some climate expertise to the culture, but Wendy is really our, our macroeconomics uh, culture, and I'm excited uh, to have you um, all here today to kick off our first um, open uh, round meeting of this roundtable. All right, so um, I think I, so today's, today's discussion is in open session. Sorry. Uh, today's discussion is in an open session. We have a lot packed into today, um, and uh, tomorrow will be in a closed door session. So um, we'll have a lot to talk about tomorrow about uh, the work that we're doing around people, but we're going to get a whole lot of information today uh, from uh, presenters. Before we begin, I'm going to turn it over to our around people director, uh, Virginia Governor, for a brief note on some basic business. Great. Thanks so much, Wendy. And um, on, on behalf of the Academy, I just want to thank you all so much for being here today in person and online. Uh, my name is Rachel McGovern. I'm an Associate Program Officer with the Board of Atmospheric Sciences and Climate, and also the Director for this Roundtable. So before we get into the substantive content of the meeting, I just want to start us off with some safety measures and logistics for the meeting. Um, so for those of you that are in person, here is a map of the NAS building. We are in the west side of the building in room 120. So the nearest emergency exit is immediately to the left when you exit the room. And the closest bathrooms are uh, get to go back through the west corridor. You take a left at the gallery, and they'll be down that hallway to the left. In both the the recording yeah, <laughs> um, so um, just in light of the ongoing pandemic, I just want to briefly touch on our COVID policies here at the academies. As you're all aware, you have to show your proof of vaccination to enter the building. And for masks, we do follow the CDC and uh, District of Columbia guidelines. Um, District of Columbia uh, guidelines for masking. So that means that we do not require masking in our buildings, but we are a mask friendly institution. If you forgot a mask or you would like one, we do have a limited supply of KN95 masks at the registration table outside of the room, as well as the security desk. If you are feeling unwell in any way, we do ask that you will participate virtually. Um, next slide, please. Um, so just some meeting logistics for those of you that are, are in the room, we do ask that you connect to Zoom, but make sure that your computer audio is on. Um, and you can also just leave the audio in, in Zoom. Um, and you can use the push to talk button in, at the mic in front of you. And then for our virtual participants, we do ask that you mute yourself when you are not speaking, um, just so that we can ensure that there are no distractions. For comments and questions for our room school members, we ask that you use the raise hand feature, including um, for our in person participants, just so we can equalize the virtual in person participation. For our public participants, you'll notice that the Zoom chat has been disabled. So please direct your questions for both staff and our roundtable members and panelists to the Zoom Q&A. Uh, next slide, please. And then lastly, I just want to mention our expectations for meeting conduct. 
At the Academy, we are committed to fostering a professional, respectful, and inclusive environment that is free from discrimination and harassment. You can find the do's and don'ts of conduct in the briefing materials online. In the same briefing book, you can find the Academy's policy on uh, harassment and bullying, as well as the uh, harassment complaint process. If you experience or witness behavior that appears to violate our code of conduct, please notify me immediately so we can address it in a timely fashion. Uh, if you feel more comfortable, you can also inform Bob or Wendy. And with that, I will turn it back over to uh, Wendy. Uh, I, I do promise we are here just a few minutes away from getting into substance, uh, and we do have a lot of great material. But uh, seems uh, a very good use of our time to quickly go around and introduce ourselves and just offer one sentence of your affiliation. Um, you already know who, and it, so why don't we do, uh, why don't we do folks online first, and then we'll do um, folks around the table and then folks from the other table. So, great. Um, I am, and I'm worried that I'm going to get confused about who's online and who's in person, but maybe I can read this out. So, uh, why don't we go to uh, people? Hi, I'm Pete Wilcoxon. I'm an e economist. I work on energy and environmental policy, and I'm at Syracuse University. Uh, Rachel Cletus. Hi, I'm Rachel Cletus. I'm also an economist. I work for the Union of Concerned Scientists based out of our Cambridge, Massachusetts office. And Chris Field. Hi, everybody. Chris Field. I'm based at Stanford, and my research is in ecology, climate science. And Emmy I'm Ina Kimura. I'm a macroeconomist uh, focused on monetary economics at UC Berkeley. Laurie Hunter. Good morning, everyone. I'm Laurie Hunter. I'm a professor of sociology at the University of Colorado Boulder, and I study primarily uh, population dynamics as related to climate. And well, I think you're online, which is funny because your name is temporary to write everything, but you're online, right? Well, well. Uh, hi, my, my name is Bilal Ayoub. I'm an engineering professor at the University of Maryland, College Park. I work in the area of risk analysis in engineering and economics. Tim Lenton. Good afternoon from the UK. Yep, Tim Lenton from the University of Exeter, a climate scientist working on climate tipping points and positive tipping points in society. And Jason. Everyone, uh, I'm a professor at the Institute for Environmental Science and Technology at the Autonomous University of Barcelona, and I work on ecological economics. Jim. Uh, Jim Stock, a macroeconomist and uh, working on uh, climate economics issues and energy transition issues at Harvard University. And Sathya. Was that me? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm Satya Gopalakrishnan, uh, an associate professor um, and environmental economist at Ohio State University. Uh, I study non-market valuation and coupled human and natural systems, particularly looking at coastal climate adaptation. And so. Hi, my name is Saul Shung. I'm at the University of California, Berkeley, and I work on uh, the economic impacts of climate change. Wonderful. Did I miss any of our uh, uh, participants who are joining us online? Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Mi Jin Cha. I'm at the University of California at Santa Cruz in the Environmental Studies Department, and I study uh, just energy transitions and labor climate conditions. I don't know why I see you now. Uh, okay, so um, why don't we um, go around this way, uh, around the table, and then we'll go around the other side. Yeah, Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. I'm Amanda Purcell. I'm here from Master of Better Water and Atmosphere Science and Climate. Here we go. It's Art Levinson. I'm an ethnic part of the Treasury right now. I'm leading the George Center University Department of Health. Hey everyone, I'm Adele Morris with the Federal Reserve Board of Governors here in Washington. 
I'm a senior advisor in the Division of Financial Stability. Good morning, I'm Heather Coleman, and I lead the uh, Climate and Environment Program at Wallace Global Fund, uh, one of the funders of this round. Hi, I'm Paulina Jaramillo, and I'm a professor at Wallace Global Fund. Coordinating the author for one of the chapters before they move to. Hi, I'm Colin Kumuf. I am not Carla Frisch. Carla is an ex officio member, uh, but I work in the Department of Energy in the Office of Policy. And we led the modeling that informed the US long term climate strategy for the organization pathways. I'm Heather Boucher. I'm a member of the President's Council of Economic Advisors. Eric Kemp Benedict uh, at the Stockholm Environment Institute. I'm a senior economist and director of our Equitable Transitions Program. Yeah, Ellen, I'm a the board on science, technology, and economic policy here at the National Academy. Hi, I'm Lenny Evansville. I am a senior director for climate, atmosphere, and global sciences. Good day, Tom Wayne, Senior Director for U.S. Science Innovation Policy at the Academy. The Center Academy, Chief Scientist of Bell. Brad Coleman, <clears throat> excuse me, recently retired atmospheric scientist and currently serving as president of the American Meteorological Society. Terrence McLaren, the WA Assistant Secretary for Macroeconomics at Treasury. I'm um, from the George Washington University, where I run our research program on forecasting. <laughs> Good morning, I'm Sonny Carlin. I'm a professor at Indiana University and my research focus on energy policy and energy justice. Morning, everybody. Um, I'm Joe Kyle. I'm the director of my economic analysis at the Commercial Budget Office um, with a broad portfolio of work, including climate issues. I'm Lars Hansen at the University of Chicago. I'm in uh, finance, economics, and statistics. My research interests are in economic dynamics and I'm certainly broad with consumer. Good morning, everybody. My name is Hannah Stewart. I'm an associate program officer with the Board on Environmental Change in Society at the Academies. Not with us today is the board director, uh, Tom Thornton, but he will be contributing to the round table. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump in. Um, I'm going to very briefly talk about uh, what we're all doing here and what the purpose of the round table is. Um, but very briefly. Um, so we have a huge, incredibly ambitious mandate uh, to try and, the way I see it, improve the communication and usefulness of the interactions between climate scientists and what climate scientists know about what's going to happen uh, over the next 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, 100 years, and how macroeconomists think about uh, modeling the economy over that same time horizon. So um, when I think macro, I think, you know, we're worried about big, broad aggregates. And so thinking about, um, you know, just like something like demographics, big, slow moving things, but have first order implications uh, for how the macro economy is going to transpire over time. Um, and uh, we'll hear today both from end users, um, the folks at agencies that are actually doing the hard work to think about how to project the macroeconomy and make really important policy decisions. Uh, and then and we'll hear from uh, climate scientists and we'll hear from macroeconomists uh, about uh, where they see the literature and where they see um, the, the, the biggest challenges in incorporating macro into their models. Uh, but before we uh, before we get to that, no, okay, good. Uh, before we get to that, before we launch our first panel, we have remarks from the National Academy of Science the President, uh, Dr. Marshall Mundell.
morning. I'm Marcia McNutt, and although I regret I can't join you in person, I'd really like to welcome you to the National Academy of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine. I'm personally very excited to see this roundtable on macroeconomics and climate-related risks and opportunities get underway. As you may know, the National Academies were created to provide expert advice on the most pressing challenges facing the nation and the world. I think it's fair to say that climate change is among one of the most serious challenges that the nation and world have ever faced. The impacts of climate change are already being felt by millions of people with potentially devastating implications for the environment, our economy, human health, and our overall well being. Clearly, the work of this roundtable is of critical importance. I think this roundtable is an excellent example of how we at the National Academies are working to galvanize action toward a more resilient and more sustainable future. First, we are working to break down disciplinary silos that confound comprehensive solutions. The cross-disciplinary expertise assembled in this group is impressive. I'm excited to see what new insights emerge from your discussions. And second, we're aiming to be more nimble in converting science into actions. That's why it's so important to have partners from critical government agencies and from the private sector as members of this roundtable. We hope that your active engagement will ensure that new research priorities identified by the roundtable effectively meet your needs. At the same time, we hope that being part of these discussions and having the opportunity to regularly engage with researchers will accelerate the incorporation of research findings into policy and practice. I'm also pleased to see that we have many participants at this meeting in addition to the roundtable members. We hope that the roundtable conversations and activities can bring together a much wider set of experts. There's a lot of work to be done to advance our understanding of how climate change and the transition to a lower carbon economy will affect our macro economy. We need a broad multidisciplinary cadre of experts to take on this challenge. Let me close by thanking the sponsors of this activity for their support and thanking each of you for giving your time, ideas, and enthusiasm to this effort. I'm confident that this roundtable will yield important and impactful advances in our knowledge of policy and practice. I'm looking forward to watching your progress, and thank you very much for all your hard work today. So all right. Uh, so we are going to move to our next panel. Um, uh, the the idea was to have um, our panelists and our moderator up at the front. Um, does that work? Unless somebody wants to like great. Yep. raise a significant objection. No. Okay. No objection being raised. Uh, so Bradley, you have to uh, we'll move everybody. Can you bring our device? Can we do that? Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, we're going to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.